um, you know, I, we're obviously we're sitting here and you were one of the big, you know, announcements yesterday is that you're the first female Asian American head coach right. in the WNBA. And we're trying to figure out what the other labels are. I'm sure there's, there's even more, one of the first few who's, you know, female Asian American coaches to coach in, in any major U S sport. Um, and there's, there's obviously barriers for, for women to coach in sports in general that you've broken um, when you coach in the NBA. Um, and then there's the fact that you're also a minority. Can you explain like the hurdles that people don't see uh, that you've had to kind of jump through to get to this position right now? Tell me how hard it has been to be a minority. Tell me how hard it's been to be a woman in the greatest country in the history of the world, the country with the best record of rights for women, the country that has given its women sovereignty in the 1920s, the country that has the best laws when it comes to spousal abuse, the country where women can own things, country where women... Tell me how hard it's been for you in this country. A typical WNBA setup question. A typical WNBA softball. Tell us how bad America is and how you it needs to change in so many ways and how being a woman is so hard in America compared to other places in the world. <laughs> okay? Typical WNBA softball question. Ingratiate yourself to the sisters. Join them in the victim narrative. Join them in the whining and complaining about the country that people are literally crossing the Gulf of Mexico in an intertube that people are literally walking through the deserts to get across this country. Show, tell me how terrible this country has been to you. Mm. You know, what's funny when people say like hurdles and barriers, like, People say that they kind of think it as a negative, you know, but when I was young um, and I, I heard it a little bit like because I was I was the only Asian American player that was playing club ball, ball or what people call AU or, you know, things like that, because I'd look around. And I'm like, oh, and then I would hear from, you know, the crowd like, oh, there's that Asian girl. There's the Asian player because I was only. Everybody was familiar with a. AAU ball in the crowds at AAU ball. Who you think was like, hey, look at that little Asian girl? Who you think was saying that? Who you think was saying that? Who you think was yelling at from the stands? Think it was white people? Think it was Hispanic people? Or do you think it was black people? Who are the people in the crowd at AAU basketball games? <laughs> hmm. For the most part. Come on now. Only one. And I just remember that. And I'm just like, huh. I'm like, how should I take this? You know, I was like 15, 16 years old. I was really young. But I was just like, well, I, at least they know who I am. Like, they, they know that because I, I was really good. So I was just like, well, they're recognizing me. Now they don't know my name. But I'm like, but the fact that, like, that, you know, they recognize me. And so, like, growing up and kind of, like, I didn't think it as a negative just because they're just like, okay, they'll, you know, they're like, they're pointing me out like it was a negative. I was just like, you know good. They know who I am because I'm about to kick their ass. <laughs> they were pointing it out as if it was a negative. Now, I've given you a few moments to think, even though you should have instantly come up with the answer. So, 
the dominant crowd at AAU basketball games were calling her, that little Asian girl, and as a negative. Same thing that WNBA players are lying about has happened to them in the in the in the um WNBA and the Indiana fever games. <laughs> Same thing they're lying about. We know that happened to her. We know. If she's the only one around us, you could be the only white one. It don't matter. However, no victim, no whining, no complaining, no crying. I'm sorry. I'm about to, you know, beat them the next time I play them. So for me, I just like, I don't ever really see hurdles or barriers as much as people like from the outside think that. I just say like, okay, what job do I want? Oh, I want to be a head coach. Oh, I want to coach, you know, in the W or I want to coach in the NBA, wherever. Like I just go for the job itself. And then I will ask, obviously, as anyone would, you would ask people that have been in that position. And then you ask like, well, how do I get there? And so then you utilize, you know, those tidbits, but like you don't bring up the barrier, like you don't bring up the hurdle because now all you're doing is you're distracting yourself from just going straight for the goal, if that makes sense. So. Listen. I hope. Now she's a former assistant with the Las Vegas Aces. She made it out of that cesspool of wokeness with this mentality. Her culture and her parents deserve a lot of credit for that. The person she is deserves a lot of credit for that. She made it out of that cesspool. Now she's going to San Francisco to be the head coach. And of course, her team's probably going to be a lot of sisters. They're going to test this. They are going to test this. The whining, the complaining about how terrible America is, how terrible fans are, how terrible this is, how much this is bad, how this is worse thing. Meanwhile, especially in California, they're being flooded with immigration. I'm talking about being flooded, like literally, like thousands and thousands of people every day from all over the world come here with knapsacks and <laughs> one change of clothes. People leaving their kids in other countries just to get here. And she's going to hear from the sisters about how terrible it is here and how horrible it is. And I I just hope she can maintain this winning attitude. This is a winning attitude. I'm going to root for them. I'm going to root for the Valkyries because of her mindset. She has a winning attitude. She sounds like a winner in life. Okay? Yes, there's a lot of people with victimhood narratives that are in high places, but most of them have been installed or most of them have been, you know, failed upwards. Salute to this woman, though. Salute to Natalie Nikase. I'm a fan. You know, I guess I can just say, like, I just run them over. That <laughs> I run over the, the hurdles, you know, rather than, like, think about it. Yeah, it's...